Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is time for the 40,000 mile update. Yes, we already have 40, actually about 41,000 miles on our Toyota Sienna Hybrid. Took just about two years to log those 40,000 miles. A uh, lot of great stuff about the van, still a few things that we don't like, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw out an agenda here for you. I know everybody's busy, so if there's only one section you're interested in, feel free to skip ahead but let's get to it. Obviously an important factor in this van is gas mileage. We're sitting at 32.6 collectively over the 41,000 we've driven this van so far. Not too bad for combined gas mileage. When it comes to maintenance, it's basically routine maintenance. Uh, rotate the tires, and then uh, change your oil. I have a video on how and when to do that. I have a video also on doing the engine air filters. Super, super easy to do. Uh, I have a video on doing the cabin air filters. Also really, really easy to do. And there's one more set of filters on a hybrid and that's the battery cooling filters. I have a video on how to do that as well. Other than that, keep your windshield wiper fluids topped off. So far, I'm at 40,000 miles. There's really no other maintenance to worry about on this van. I think the question I get asked more than anything else about this van is how well or not well does it drive in the mountains or in snow in winter conditions. I have a ton of experience with this. We live in the mountains. It's literally snowing at my house right now. We put this van through the ringer when it comes to winter driving, and it's overall fantastic. But here's a couple things I wanna make sure everybody's aware of when it comes to winter driving. Let's start by taking a look at what tires I'm using. I did a lot of research when we bought our first set of tires after the factory ones wore out, and we settled on these Cross Contact LX25s from Continental. They're very well rated. I got the Eco Plus um, rubber compound on these, and I have to say that so far, I've got about 11,000 miles on them, they are holding up great, and they perform absolutely fantastic when it comes to snow, slush, and winter conditions. We recently went on a uh, little sledding expedition and uh, we were heading up to the sled hill area and turns out we were the first ones up there that morning. You can see us jamming up the road here, uh, completely unplowed. There's about six inches of snow on the road and those Continentals and the all wheel drive in this van just took it like a champ. The biggest challenge you honestly have when it comes to driving in deeper snow is just the ground clearance of the van itself. But when it comes to traction, uh, this van just does great. The all-wheel drive works fantastic. I've never had to chain it up or anything like that. So if you are driving and, and running the van in conditions like this, you might get this on your screen, clean parking assist sensor. It usually comes on while you're driving. And the culprit is simply that the sensors on the front end of this van have gotten covered with ice and snow and slush. It can happen in dirt and mud as well. Um, so you can see there those sensors just get all covered with all of this ice and slush as you drive. And so that alarm is going to go off in the car and it will just temporarily disable your parking assist sensor. So be careful when you're parking close to things when you're uh, covered with ice and slush and what have you. Now on the negative side, one complaint I do have is the lack of um, the defroster's ability to adequately defrost. If you put four bodies in this car and it's cold and wet outside, it gets pretty foggy in there. You gotta crack a window or, you know, it just wait a little while for that defroster to catch up. You have to run that thing on high, on full blast in order to get uh, that front windshield to clear. It just, it gets pretty foggy inside this van, unfortunately. If you have a trailer hitch installed on your Sienna like I do, you're gonna need something to create some space back here for things like bike racks. 
Uh, I have this six inch riser adapter uh, extension, whatever you want to call it, installed, and it works really, really well. Um, you could see here with the back hatch open and the bike's just kind of tipped out of the way for a little extra space, you can still open and close the rear hatch all the way with one of these extenders on there. Now, from a height perspective, let me, let me show you this. If you look at the hitch without the extender with a basketball, it's so low to the ground, but now look how high it is. So you really want this to get something like a bike rack up off the ground and moved well out of the way uh, from things like curbs and what have you. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need to know is when you do install one of these uh, riser or extenders, you're going to need something to hold in place. See how wiggly it is. Um, that becomes kind of problematic. So you need something like this. Uh, you've got that U-bolt down there with the little plate and some nuts on the bottom. And what that does is it basically locks that adapter into the receiver in the van and it just keeps everything really stable so stuff isn't moving around all over the place. So you're really gonna want something like that so that you can do something like put a bike rack on and keep it from wiggling around like this. I'll put links in the description to all of these parts. When it comes to crossbars, I cannot recommend high enough these Thule wing bars. These things are fantastic. Uh, one of the things I really like about these, outside the fact that they are very aerodynamic, is how easy it is to install things like ski racks. So I got these Rhino Rack ski racks, and they're so easy to take on and off. Um, all you have to do is grab this little end cap that you see right here and flip it up out of the way. Now, after you do that, there's this little channel right here with these little two rubber pieces that meet in the middle. And these little feet on the bottom of these ski racks, they just slide right into that channel. So you simply drop that in there. I'm doing this all just with one hand. You slide that in place, slide the second one in, shove it in just a little bit, and then you can close this. And then to tighten this thing down, you just open the ski rack. There's a four mil Allen right here and one more on the other end. That's it. These things literally take a minute to install. They are so quick and so easy to install. And so I, I use them when I go skiing. And then when we get home, I literally just take them out. You loosen those two Allens and then slide them back out the same way you put them in. Cannot recommend these enough. Uh, fantastic non-factory option when it comes to crossbars. All right, one of the other things that I've heard other owners complain about is that these seats, when they're folded flat like this, they tend to bounce when you go over bumps. And I will say that the, the double side, not so much the single side, but the double side, it is really light so I mean I'm just using two fingers and it will actually bounce when you go over like speed bumps and stuff they'll 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 move it's not really a big deal but it is something to be aware of um, of course if you have stuff back here on them then it's not a problem um, but I guess on the plus side it makes these really easy to lift because they're incredibly lightweight and very well balanced so they're very easy to lift. Of course, most of the time, like normal, we have our trusty old moving blanket in place. And uh, if the seats are flat, this is in here about 99% of the time. All right, one other little interior thing here, uh, and this is the Apple CarPlay cord or the iPhone cord. I figured out that I could run it down inside this piece of trim from the, from the front back to the armrest here and then just have it pop out there, and then I just have it swinging up into the phone, which is in a little cup holder, you know, phone holder. Um, uh, anybody that's watched the channel knows I'm not happy with those cup holders, but it does okay for holding a phone like that. And so you just have this little pigtail kind of hanging out there, and then it's kind of out of the way, and it's not down by your foot or your knee or something. 
Now, the location, I complained about the location of that USB being way up there. It just seemed like a really weird spot to me. And I had a viewer tell me, hey, it's for using Apple CarPlay at a drive-thru. So they put the USB so that the phone cord could reach. So here I have um, an, an Apple iPhone cord that one of my kids kind of bedazzled here. And I wanted to see if it would actually reach. And I mean, I guess it does. The phone reaches outside of the window, uh, probably enough that you could use it to do Apple Pay um, at a drive-thru. I don't know that I'm that worried about leaving my phone plugged in just so I can uh, do Apple Pay and not unplug my phone. E either way, I, I guess it would work, but I just don't like the, the long cord being up there dangling down by my foot and by the gas pedal. Okay, that about wraps up everything. Overall, after 40,000 miles, we're really happy with the van. It drives great. Uh, it's comfortable, you know, it hauls the kids around. It does everything you want a minivan to do. Uh, we've been super, super happy with it. Um, so anyway, let me know what you think. Drop your comments or your questions down in the comments section. I will do my absolute best to respond to each and every one of you. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you uh, found any of this helpful or entertaining or anything, it'd be awesome absolutely fantastic if you drop a like and a subscribe that really helps me out a lot and it helps my channel a lot anyway enough of that crap thanks so much for watching have a great day